Welcome to this series on how math is used in construction. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about roof slope. So we'll look at calculating it and some of the reasons why different construction projects use different roof slopes, some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So why does it matter? Well, moisture is one of our biggest concerns. We obviously want to stay dry inside. So we want to be able to remove the moisture. A roof that has a steeper slope removes the moisture much more effectively because the moisture sheds itself. Flat roofs tend to collect water, precipitation. Structural strength. A triangle is the strongest shape generally. So having a roof with a slope to it, a significant slope, can add significant structural strength to the building. Practicality. In some cases, such as uh, like a shopping mall, we're looking very wide, it could be a few hundred feet wide. To put much slope on that roof is going to be impractical because we're going to get very, very, very high roof. Also, lots of times we want a flat roof so that we can install things like our air conditioning, our heating, and maybe a patio upstairs where uh, people can go out for um, have gardens or um, have garden parties. And maintenance. A flat roof is harder to maintain from a perspective of it's hard to keep it in good shape because the water pools and doesn't shed as well. So it tends to take more maintenance, but it's also easier to do maintenance on because it's flat. It's easy to work on. A really steep roof will be great from the perspective of it'll probably need very little maintenance because it's very strong, sheds any moisture, snow won't stick to it. Um, but if anything does go wrong, it does get significantly more difficult to do maintenance on. It may require ropes and scaffolds and um, different things like that in order to be able to do basic maintenance on it. So let's look at calculating roof slope. Like in other areas of math, slope is determined with rise over run. In this case, our rise is the height and our run is what we typically call span in construction the horizontal distance. So here's an example of what we call a 112, where it means it rises one inch for every 12 inches of span, or every 12 horizontal inches, one inch vertical. Here's what a 212 looks like. This is an interesting application of fractions or ratios because typically we want to simplify fractions whenever possible, but not in this case. We may want to simplify this for a purpose of um, calculations, which we'll see in another example further on. But as far as terminology goes, when we're referring to slope, we go 1 to 12, 2 to 12, 3 to 12, so on. Just that they're all referenced to 12 inches, we don't need to simplify them. So here's a 312, or 3 in 12, a 4 in 12, some slightly different terminology depending on what part of the world you're in. So that we go up to a 612 slope. So what does this look like in real life? A flat roof is generally termed as anything from 0 to 2. So this is a 0 12, a 1 12, and a 2 12. So these all classify as a flat roof. Then we go to the low slope roof, which starts again at 2, and 3 12, and 4 12. So 412 is getting significantly steeper and will certainly shed water fine. It's still a little on the low side for areas where, say, there's high snow load or things like that. But for a lot of um, locations, a 412 is plenty of slope. Then we get into the conventional roof and we have the 412, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You can see by the time we get to 12, 12, that it is going to be significantly problematic to do installation and maintenance on this roof. It's great in that there's very little chance you'll have problems with leaking. No moisture is going to stay on that roof. Snow is going to come off. Water is going to come off quickly. But the maintenance and installation uh, are definitely factors you need to consider when you get into roofs that are really steep like that. 
Here's an example of a single slope roof which is being designed that is 36 feet wide. If the design calls for a slope of 212, how tall will the truss be at the highest point? For this, we just use proportional ratios. So we would set it up like this. 212 is proportional to x over 36 because we're just looking for the rise. And we know that the run in real life is 36. So the first method we can use is cross multiply and divide. 36 times 2 divided by 12 gives us 6 feet. So we'd have a height of 6 feet. Sometimes using factors can be even simpler. So we know that 12 times 3 is 36. So likewise, 2 times 3 is 6. Gives us the same answer. Either method is perfectly correct. And sometimes one is easier than the other. So feel free to use either method. In this example, a roof is being designed that is peaked in the center and is 48 feet wide. If the design calls for a slope that is 412, how tall will the truss be in the center? So we need to break this down into a right triangle, which means dividing our span in half to get under the peak of the roof. So we'll use 24 foot span for our reference here. So let's go 412 is going to be our reference ratio, and x over 24 will be our real life measurements. Again, cross multiply and divide. 24 times 4 divided by 12 gives us 8 feet. So it would be 8 feet tall in the center. Again, we know 12 times 2 is 24. So therefore, 4 times 2 is 8. Either method, totally fine. Again, a roof is being designed that's peaked in the center, is 32 feet wide, this time with a slope of 312. So again, we set this up exactly the same way. 312 is our reference ratio, and x over 16 is our real life ratio. 16 times 3 divided by 12 is 4 feet, so it needs to be 4 feet high in the center. We can still use our factors to be able to do this. A little bit tricky. 12 times 4 thirds is 16 and 3 times 4 thirds is 4. So it doesn't work quite as easily this way. Personally, I would use the cross multiply and divide, but both ways work perfectly fine. In this example, Kaleem is building a new house and wants it to match the height of the neighboring houses. The other roofs have a height of 10 feet from eaves to peak and Kaleem wants his house to be 40 feet wide. What slope will he need to design the roof for? So in this case, we're trying to find slope, not the other way around. So we can set this up as a ratio of 10 feet to 20 feet, rise over run, is something to 12. And so then what we need to find out what that is. We can use cross multiply and divide again. 12 times 10 divided by 20 equals 6. We could also use simplification. So 10 over 20 is the same as 1 half. 2 times 6 is 12. 1 times 6 is 6. Or 6 is half of 12. A few different ways to look at that one. Sometimes the slope is referred to as percent. We just look at our ratio of rise to run, 5 to 20. 5 divided by 20 is 0.25 times 100 is 25%. In this example, a rise of 12 to a run of 20. 12 divided by 20 is 0.6 times 100 is 60%. That's all there is to calculating slope as a percent. What is more common is slope in degrees. So if you're using an inclinometer or often a digital level, things like that, it can be handy to use uh, angles in degrees. For this, we need trigonometry. Let's look at this example. We want to find angle theta. That's down in the corner there. And we'll again set up our rise over run is 5 over 20. Now we're going to use the tangent ratio. A tangent references opposite over adjacent. Our opposite in this case is 5 because it's the side that does not touch the angle. It's opposite of the angle. And 20 is our adjacent because it does touch our angle theta. And 5 divided by 20 again is 0.25. And when we take the arc tangent of 0.25, we get 14 degrees. Let's try this again with a different one. 
So this time we have a rise of 15, a run of 38. Again, we use the tangent function and we get a ratio of 0.395. Take the arc tangent, we get an angle of 21.6 degrees. In this case, we know the angle, the 28 degrees. We don't know how high the truss is going to be. So let's use the same principle to find this. So this time we're going to put the tangent of 28, because we know the angle, is equal to x, the rise, over a run of 18, which we do know. When we rearrange this to solve for x, we get the tan of 28 times 18 is equal to x. When we calculate that, we get that it is equal to 9.57. Now this is correct, except that tape measures won't have 9.57 feet on them. So let's break this down a little bit more. Let's take the 0.57 of a foot, times it by 12, because we have 12 inches, and we get 6.84 inches, which is great for the 6-inch part, but we don't have 0.84 of an inch on our tape measures either. So let's convert this to 16 of an inch. So 0.84 times 16 is 13. So when I put this all together, we have 9 feet, 6 and 13 sixteenths inches as our total height of the truss. As a quick reference, here's some general acceptable norms for some common roofing materials. A mineral surfaced rolled roofing should be installed on roof slopes of 112 or greater. So they can be very flat, but they shouldn't be perfectly flat. We still don't want water pooling on them. The water should be able to move to the edges or to wherever our drains are. Asphalt shingles should be installed on roof slopes of 212 or greater. This does depend, well all of these depend a bit on our climate. In lots of parts of the world, 212 would be perfectly acceptable for asphalt. If you're in northern climates where you have snow buildup, then 212 would be really minimal. Uh, the problem is that the snow can freeze up along the eaves of the house and water will back up and creep up underneath. So generally you want higher than that, but these would be minimums. Clay and concrete roof tiles, a minimum of two and a half to 12, and wood shingles, a minimum of three to 12. So I hope you've benefited from this lesson and we'll see you again on another one.